Pretty is not as important as authentic. There are so many really, really beautiful, gorgeous, super cute design trends out there that you should absolutely avoid because everybody's doing it. I'm gonna talk about them, let's go. What up y'all, welcome back. I'm Liz Marie. I am a brand strategist and creative director for women and BIPOC entrepreneurs. My whole goal is to help them get clarity, level up your brand, and create economic power and generational wealth. That's why we're doing this. But today, I am sounding off, I'm letting y'all know, you need to avoid some of the things that are going out there in this branding world. It is a great time for design right now. Good, beautiful, really nice design is more accessible than ever. It's more affordable, there's more ways to get it, whether it's Creative Market, which is super cheap, or Canva, which it can be free. There's so much out there, and there are so many ways to see what other people are doing especially on social media. And that can be really, really good, especially if you're a business owner without a lot of resources. And it can be really, really bad because everyone's shit can look the same. It can become so easy to straight up copy somebody or fall into a trend that is just a passing fad or to take on something that you like that actually isn't true to you or it's not right for your audience. All of these things are not authentically you and they're not really gonna get your brand that far in the long run, even if they look good. I don't normally wanna be a hater. I don't like to talk shit about other people's brands. And I'm not gonna talk shit about their brands. I'm gonna say, here are things to consider when you're building your brand so that you don't end up copying someone else's shit and looking just like everybody else. And this is especially important because most of these trends that I'm gonna talk about today are geared towards women. They're portraying some vision of femininity or they're used for brands that are trying to target women and frankly like that shit just pisses me off because as a woman we can like all types of shit it doesn't need to be this stereotypical or this limiting and so there are a lot of options out there that's just my little pet peeve thrown in so let's talk about it so the first trend that i see is what i'm going to call bohemian design some of the characteristics of this are line art of hands, crystals, stars and moons, plants, this kind of thin, delicate, really cute line art coupled with warm, natural, earthy palettes. So like tans and deep reds and all different kinds of neutral colors. And like I said, these are beautiful. They're really, really gorgeous designs. One of the reasons they're so accessible is because a lot of really talented designers are creating these and selling them. And you know, go ahead, get your money. But they're everywhere now. <laughs> they're everywhere and it's starting to look really generic. And if that is really true to who your brand is and that's like the appropriate look for your whole personality or your product and your audience isn't really gonna deeply resonate with that, fantastic. But that's not the case for everyone. And there are probably other ways to express that identity that are gonna be more unique. Adjacent to that is what I call Matisse inspired abstract. Matisse is an incredible artist uh, from earlier in the 20th century. He's one of my favorite artists. In fact, for years I've wanted a tattoo of one of his cutouts, um, which is exactly what inspired this trend. He created uh, paper cutouts and wood cutouts of you know, nature, leaves, women's bodies, things like that. They're really simple and abstract and um, colorful. And that has sparked a huge trend of using really kind of rough abstract cutouts and line style art, which he also did, as the basis for your graphics. Once again, it's gorgeous. It's really cute. I love it. I even found myself when I was first exploring brand processes, pulling some of those into mood boards or into my Pinterest of my exploration. And then I started realizing, oh my God, this is everywhere. So many people are doing this. And it was really, really original when he did this in 1940 as a totally abstract expressionist artist, not so original today. And again, it's being used to represent soft nature, feminine things. There's nothing wrong with it. It's great, but it's just really, 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 really overused. The third trend is what I call clean and girly. Now I will admit I am not the most girly 
person in the world. I love me some pink, but all those kind of stereotypical what a girl is supposed to like types of things, I could take or leave for the most part. But there's a particular look that has emerged over years and years and years that is light and bright and white and pale pinks and marbles and I'll just throw some stuff up on the screen so you could see. <laughs> and it represents this idea. It's often used associated with girl boss type of feminism, girl boss business ownership, that you have to be that clean and polished and feminine to be a woman in business. And that's what I don't like about it. It's become such a distinctive look and it, for many people, they think if they want to market or reach women with their business, that they have to do something like that. It becomes really, really limiting, which is just bullshit. It's not true. Women like all different types of colors <laughs> and we don't just like pink and white and girly. And some of us do, and it's still beautiful. It, it's crisp and polished, but it's overdone. It's so, so overdone. So reconsider, think about doing something a little different, explore another option. The next is what I call the dark and moody editorial look. Ah, <sighs> this is a tough one. This is a tough one. This look is inherently very, very timeless. If you have seen my video on luxury branding, this look is rooted in so many of those element elements, including black and white color palette, really fashiony, high-end photography, sleek, high contrast typography, like a serif font um, that's used kind of like in a magazine. Those are amazing, beautiful design elements that I absolutely love. Generally, they are very, very timeless, but there has been a trend within that look. A lot of it has been, I think, started at least from my perception by design studios like Wildflower Studio or High Moon, who are incredibly talented studios and designers who are very, very influential and then just have been copied all the fuck over Instagram. So notice to them, they're super talented and originators of this particular type of style or the this iteration of it. But the downside is that they get copied all over the place. And again, I love the look of it. It's gorgeous. It's so, so nice. And it conveys the sophistication and sexiness and all these things. And so many people are doing it. <laughs> and some of people are like straight up ripping it off. Like there's an element to this that you can take parts of it and make it your own or do it in a new way that's unique or add something else to it that makes it special or try a different typeface or, you know, you can be inspired by and then make it your own. But a lot of people are just straight up copying this shit. Again, it's not very original. It's also really shitty for the designers that are creating this type of look and feel. I think with Wildflower Design Company, she had a particular post that was her original creation that just became copied over and over and over again and like Canva created a template. All these people stole, like straight up stole her design. That sucks. Anyway, next we have what I will call delicate monogram word marks. I couldn't come up with a better way to describe this, but when I put it on the screen, you know exactly what I mean. Beautiful, really um, subtle and nuanced, sophisticated type with a little custom word mark or a custom icon right above it. This is getting more specific because it's like a logo style, but also really great design. It's a thing. I've looked on Pinterest and I saw a whole bunch of them in a row, just sitting there right in a row. <sighs> we can be better than this. We can be different. And last one, also a logo trend, is what I'm calling 70s modern. You'll see this when I put it up. It is pulling in retro, sturdy, kind of quirky serif typefaces inspired by the 70s, kind of chunky, and a little personality to them and pairing that with a really vibrant color palette. Again, it's super cute and it conveys like a lightheartedness and a playfulness, but still being polished and sophisticated. It's just gotten really, really overdone. It's like a look now that I see in logos and in typography all the time. I think it will, with more perspective of time, be looked back on as a trend. And I personally don't think brands should ever be trendy, meaning they evolve with fads. You want your brand to be timeless. Even if you evolve it a little bit over time and make tweaks, you don't want to ever just reinvent it constantly to fit with the trends because the trends are not the most important thing. What your audience wants is the most important thing and what is authentic to you is the most important thing. Thing. I hope I don't sound like too much of a hater. Again, it's beautiful, but we can do better. We can do better than looking like everybody else. So what's the solution to all of the sameness in these beautiful design trends? If you have branding already, if you're already using some of these, don't trip. Look, I'm not telling you to forget it. 
because it looks great. It's polished. It, these are great design concepts. That's why everyone loves them so much. So don't trip, but as you grow and as you evolve, make sure that this look and feel is aligned with who you really are and who your audience really wants. And definitely that it's not the only look out there and that you're really standing out from the crowd. If you don't have this branding already or you're looking to rebrand, the first thing you can do is figure out your own personality. Knowing your personality and what your brand stands for and what your audience expects are really important to the first step to figuring out what the right look and feel for you is. You can still use affordable resources or templates or done for you logos if you have to, if that, those are the options that work for you. I will never say just don't do it if those are the only options you have, but you can customize them or look for ones that are a little more unique. Try to go against the grain more than just what's the most popular out there and just be mindful of what other people are doing so that you can try to stand out. And finally, always the best approach if you can take it, if you're in a position to take it, is to hire a designer. We as designers are going to create something for you that is totally custom, that hopefully if you have a good designer, there's no chance that it's going to be copying someone else out there and it's gonna to be totally true to you inherently because it's created just for you. That is always the best option but if you're not there yet, that's okay. Don't trip, you'll get there one day. So in conclusion, these are my beautiful design trends to avoid going forward in your brand. And my final takeaway is just be your fucking self. I mean, it's really easy to copy what's out there. It is really easy to think something is gorgeous and want it for yourself. It's happened to me too. I've thought, oh, that typeface is so cool. Maybe I should add that into my branding. But at the end of the day, pretty is never as effective as authentic. Say it with me now, pretty is never as effective as authentic. Being true to yourself, being truly unique and aligning that with your audience is absolutely the most important thing. So if you need help figuring out the personality that is right for your design style, is right for your brand so that you can forget these trends, check out my brand archetypes guide. It'll help you find the personality for your brand. And until next time, stay badass. All right, y'all, if you like this video, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff down there. And check me out at, at LizMarieStrategy or LizMarieStrategy.com.